Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox, Syncrable Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present my initial release version for the Rocket Lab Neutron Rocket. There will be a link in the video description for it. It will require Realism Overhaul as well as Textures Unlimited, so keep that in mind. Uh, though potentially you can use it with stock, uh, it will potentially work, maybe. Uh, just make sure to delete the Realism Overall configuration file. You still probably should have Textures Unlimited. Uh, but in any case, I have modeled the Archimedes engine, so it's no longer a variant of my ED4 engine. I have also modeled the second stage. What you will not get are the fins. I just use B9 procedural wings for those. And so, but the fairing, uh, this payload is just a procedural tank. Uh, you should have your own payload adapter slash decoupler because the second stage does not have a decoupler on top of it. Uh, but it does have this ring decoupler uh, to mount it into the first stage at the top, as they said. Uh, I just made it a very simple thing. It has actually quite a lot of colliders in it because uh, colliders have to be convex AF4 Kerbal Space Program. So basically there's a whole bunch of colliders around it, but in any case, uh, the second stage seems to be able to slip through. It's a little bit dark actually, the second stage. It does have the texture on it, sort of a uh, carbon fiber weave thing going. Um, the upper portion of it, so what is not part of this, so this is the second stage and there's uh, the ring is the decoupler there. Uh, these are not part of it, this is just a payload adapter. Uh, this does have a control core built in and its stats are as you see there. So it's a 96 ton upper stage right now. Uh, they said it's the lightest upper stage ever. I assume that means the relationship between the dry mass and the wet mass, not because obviously there are other lighter upper stages. But anyway, uh, that's fairly light, uh, three tons uh, dry and 96 tons wet seems reasonable. I mean, uh, now if you want to find these parts, of course, you should type neutron for the rocket. Uh, I initially did not have the neutron tag for the Archimedes engine, so but the one I'll zip up should have those tagged neutron as well, so they'll show up. And I'm waiting for the search function. All right. Uh, so you'll have the neutron first stage, second stage, and decoupler. Uh, but there's also the old style core stage if you wanted that. I don't know. So uh, that's still there, the dummy one that they threw out there. And then uh, right now I have to type Archimedes to get the other two. Now the vacuum engine is just a somewhat elongated model of the sea level. You can see, um, I c considering the efficiency that they seem to be getting, I didn't think it was that much bigger. So you can see it is a bigger nozzle. This is a tighter nozzle for the sea level one. Uh, I tried to... I kept it very simple, obviously, but it is based on what they showed in the video. So, um, yeah, it's just an uh, oversimplified version of what they showed, and I decided to go with that. And that is what we have there. Now, when you put the second stage into the first stage, which I suggest you do, <laughs> uh, make sure you put it on the right node. And one, uh, and let me try and. One thing that might be handy is to just take this off because what happens is there's actually a node at the bottom. See, uh, uh, on this floor here, there is a node that the engine, the vacuum engine might accidentally try to go on. So we have to avoid that. And so I would generally put it in like that first and then sort of sneak in and then put the vacuum engine on this node here like that. So that ensures that we are going to get on the right node. And one way to check is that we do have two stages indicated here. Otherwise, it'll automatically feed the second stage tank into the first stage engines. So you'll only get delta V from one stage. Okay, you can see our stats right now. And actually, let's just go over the stats of the engines as I have them. Um, so, yeah, I decided on... 266 seconds ISP sea level, 325 vacuum, uh, roughly matching what they had um, on Wikipedia, frankly. Uh, 325 second vacuum ISP. 
and that's for the sea level one. Uh, you see 0.9 ton mass. It's all very conservative. And I think everybody seems to agree that they basically gave us ridiculously conservative numbers uh, so that they will definitely match those. And for the vacuum engine, 340 vacuum. Again, ridiculously conservative for a uh, methane oxygen engine, uh, considering that I think Merlin vacuum gets better than that. Uh, but 1.05 tons, as you can see, uh, fairly heavy, so uh, probably they'll make it lighter, probably they'll get it more efficient, but we can't be sure, so if that's what they're going for, that's what they're going for. And, yep, so that is the situation. We'll try it out with 15 tons, you can see 15 tons here, though I do have this additional payload adapter here that you will not be having. Uh, which you don't need, you can just use a smaller decoupler if you need to. And that is the rocket, so let's go. Okay, here it is on the pad in its interesting form. And I did put sort of uh, ghost RCS thrusters on the first stage. Oh, huh, the payload decoupler seems to be clipping in there. Mm, might want to shift it down a little bit. Yeah, I didn't notice that in the VAB. Hold on a sec. Is doing that in the VAB or... If not, maybe that's just an artifact and it'll go away when we launch. That happens sometimes. Now the advertised mass was 280, uh, sorry, 480. We're a little bit lighter than that. Yeah, in here it's not doing that. So I think once we launch it'll be okay. Well, now it's not even doing it. Well, there you go. All right, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. I might have to think about shortening the spool up time on the engines because after all, they do have to be able to land eventually. So like the Raptors and the Merlins, they should have a short time there. So we're gonna exhaust the stage in this case though to launch to 15 tons. And again, they would launch out of Wallops and not from Cape Canaveral. The second stage RCS is visible, I just don't know where to uh, place it on the first stage. So the RCS ports here are invisible, but they will work. So if we take a look at uh, that's the first stage, you can see this disabled RCS here. The RCS on both stages will just use methane and oxygen for now until we get some information about what they actually use. And I actually don't want the engine to ignite immediately. We're gonna sort of push it out with the RCS. The engines do throttle. I set them down to 25% to make it easier for people to land them. Um, yeah, we'll get the throttle range when we get the throttle range from them, but for now we might as well. While we can fantasize, imagine an easy time of it. I'm actually gonna try and save one second just for the RCS system to hold it stable. We'll cut off there. All right, so open fairing and RCS is on. So we have released and slowly pulling out here. <laughs> I'm assuming they don't want to light the engine in there and like blow stuff up or something. And probably it'll be a spring release kind of thing. We could put more decoupling force on the decoupler if necessary. Though this is sort of fun too. Okay, that's probably good enough. And ignition. Well, we probably need... I took my time on that. So... Our time to orbit is not, uh, time to apoapsis is not great now. Okay, pitching down again. Uh, might want to toss some MLI layers on the second stage. It looks like we have some imbalance between methane and oxygen. Might want to check that out. Okay, well, we actually fell short this time, but that's all right considering how bad I did the trajectory 
especially as we decoupled from the upper stage. And we seem to have a surplus of 796 liquid oxygen there. Let me just double check the fuel mixture here. So we get 6335.6. Uh, so let's say I remove the tanks and just have it add the fuel mixture for the engine. Uh, it seems like it's a little bit different here. So we had a little bit of an incorrect fuel mixture. I will change that in the configuration. I must have just typed the stuff in my calculator wrong. So I will change that in the configuration that I link in the video, video description so there's no discrepancy there. But right now, as you can see, uh, even with uh, some surplus in the form, I mean, some waste, if you will, in the form of an extra payload adapter that's heavier than it needs to be, uh, plus uh, the weird way we sort of scooted out of the payload uh, first stage uh, instead of just igniting the engine immediately, wasting some time to apoapsis and had to pitch up to compensate. Uh, this should be able to make orbit if you do the trajectory right and it will have a capacity of 15 tons as described. So I'll fix the fuel mixture there and that should make up for the rest and I'll link the result in the video description of course uh, maybe I will consider adding additional configurations to the Archimedes engine for more optimistic numbers. Uh, but for now, I'll just uh, keep it to the numbers that give us the kind of payload capacity that they say that they're going to get. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.